In this video, I'll show you how you can take a quill animation like this one and put it into Maya. Although it's not essential, I would recommend optimizing your quill scene a little bit before you take it out to Maya. By looking at my animation timeline, there are a few things that stick out as things that I will want to change before I export my FBX. Any blank spaces before an animation starts should be removed. All animations should start at the zero point. If you have a layer like this one that starts with blank keyframes, delete those so that it starts with full keyframes. Otherwise, that layer will come in without frames on it. Your animation layers in Maya won't loop, so keep that in mind. When you play back your animation in Maya, this layer will end before this layer. Maya doesn't know to loop your animation, so it'll behave like this. You can fix this in Maya through a manual process, or you can just make sure that all your layers are the same length before you export your FBX, so that the Maya timeline itself is looping. There's a trick for making all your animation layers the same length before you export. I'm going to use Confetti as the example, because this is the longest of the tracks. I want the kid layer to be just as long as this one. So what I can do is go to a new layer, create a set of blank keyframes, and then merge down. It will bake all the animation frames from this layer onto this layer, and it'll continue to this new last frame. I can do the same thing with the thank you button. Now my animation tracks are all 14 frames long. Any static layers, in this case ground, can be ignored. Those should go into Maya without any issue at all. Once you've tidied up your scene, head to the export window. You can use either FBX or Alembic for this process. In my case, I'll use FBX. It's a little bit lighter, and it should work for this video. Alembic is fine too, but it's a little bit heavier. For the rest of the settings, all we need is export meshes and export animation. You can uncheck the other options and make sure that the color space is set to gamma. Then, just hit export. Once you've got Maya open, you can drag your FBX file into the scene. If you don't see your mesh, select Baked Mesh and press the F button to center on it. If your file is having clipping issues, go to the camera, go to Perspective Shape, and change the far clip plane by adding a few zeros. To view the colors, you'll need a vertex color shader. I'll be providing two of these in the description below. Once you drag it in, you can select your baked mesh group, right click on your model, choose assign existing materials, and then choose your vertex color shader. In my case, Wateru vertex color shader. To see the colors, simply turn on your textures. You'll notice that the gamma is off. To fix this, just uncheck the button up here. Now remember when I mentioned that you might have looping issues? Press play and you'll see what I mean. Since I took precautions for this, all the animation layers will stop on the same frame. But that's still not what we want. First thing you should do is go and change your FPS to match what it was in the quill scene. In my case, I was working at 12 FPS. If your frame rate seems off, go to the animation preferences and ensure that the playback speed is set to 12 FPS times one. Now that we've corrected the frame rate, the animation should play until frame 14 just like in our quill scene. So now, you can just adjust your timeline to go until frame 14. Now if you play, you'll get a perfect loop, just like you had in quill. There are a few different ways to change the background color, but in my case, I'm going to change the scene background. You can adjust this in Windows, Settings and Preferences, Color Settings, 3D Views, and then Color Pick the, for the background. If you turn off your grid, it should look exactly like quill. By going into your camera settings, you can now adjust your camera in ways that you could never do inside of Quill. Here, I'll give myself a high focal length of 80, or a really low focal length of 5. You can see how I can get strange effects that were not possible with the Quill cameras. If you want crisp renders of your Quill scene, hit the Render button, and make sure that your render is set to Maya Hardware 2. Arnold will not work with Quill Vertex Colors. Like in your Quill scene before, make sure that the color correction is off. If you want to render the image sequence, make sure you go to your render settings, change your image format to something like JPEG, or if you want a transparent background, maybe a PNG. Set your frame extension setting with animation, such as 
this one. Set your start frame and end frame to match your animation. Pick your renderable camera, set how high quality you want your image, and then hit render sequence. You can find your renders in the directory listed in the render settings. Using this image sequence, I can now string them back together using a software like Premiere to get a full 4K animation from my quill scene.